So what are three things that are holding back cloud computing? The answers may surprise you. Let's talk about it. So this topic was suggested uh, by a listener, and I thought it was uh, kind of cool to revisit this because I did an article for Information World, uh, and not Info World, I'm sorry, Information Week, um, back in 2010, and I'll... Uh, I'll link it down in the uh, in the in the description below uh, that talked about the things that were were killing cloud computing. Really, was holding back cloud computing in terms of uh, things that were happening that were limiting the growth of cloud computing or limiting the uh, uh, exponential utilization of cloud computing for enterprises. And obviously, it's different back in 2010 than it is in uh, 2024. Um, but when I read the article, I found that many of the same limitations that were hitting us uh, 14 years ago, 15 years ago, are still hitting us today. So what are the things that are killing cloud computing? And I think I have three of the main ones. Let's go through each. So first and kind of obviously would be security vulnerabilities. Um, one of the most significant threats to cloud computing is a persistent concern about security vulnerabilities. And Obviously, as I mentioned on this YouTube channel a ton of times, cloud's pretty good at security. There's a lot of great, well thought out, very innovative security mechanisms that are in the cloud. I think the trouble comes in with mistakes that people are making. So it's not the fact they don't have the tools they need. It's the fact the matter is that they're not using the tools correctly. So, you know, things like storage misconfigurations, database misconfigurations, normally are the things that lead to breaches. And what's occurring now is that the need or the demand for cloud security specialists, engineers, architects, things like that, is expanding greatly. But the number of people who are entering that career field is not. And so there seems to be a lack of skills, lack of understanding, lack of knowledge in terms of how cloud security needs to work. And that's fairly concerning right now because as enterprises, certainly as they move into generative AI, they're going to expand their use of cloud computing, thus expand the use of security. There, if they don't have the talent around, they're going to be able to secure these systems for them. Then we're going to continue to be limited by the security vulnerabilities that cloud computing has. And if you look at one of the reasons that CIOs cite in terms of their unwillingness uh, to move additional systems in the cloud or leverage, leverage public cloud providers even more, security vulnerabilities is always at the top of the list. And it's funny, that was the case 15 years ago, and it's the case today. So the next thing that's killing cloud computing is compliance and regulatory challenges. The landscape of data privacy and protection laws is evolving and the requirements being enforced globally, and they're very different. Uh, you're dealing with multiple jur uh, jurisdictions. Uh, they're creating rules and regulations that are specifically targeted at cloud services, public cloud services for sure. And it becomes uh, a limiting factor in enterprises' ability to leverage cloud. And so, you know, there's data localization laws and sovereign data laws where data has to reside within a specific border, can't be transferred uh, out of the country. They view cloud providers as providing a, a, a potential risk of doing that because obviously cloud providers are going to have points of presence all over the world. And uh, if you copy your data uh, outside of the borders, uh, you're gonna be violating the law. And so instead of dealing with that and dealing with the data governance and dealing with the risk, many enterprises just are choosing not to put their workloads and put their data in the cloud. And this is going to be an issue for the same reason we cited with security. We don't have enough people around who are understanding the governance processes and the governance tools and governance mechanisms to control and limit and provide compliance as a service, where it's an automated system that are carrying these things out. Right now, these things are largely manually implemented uh, there's a lot of risk, and I see in some of these things just the way they're set up. And it's it's not the fault of the cloud providers, the cloud technology specifically. It's the matter of the fact, same as with security, we don't have the talent that we need to implement these technologies correctly. And so compliance and regulatory challenges continues to be an issue. And I think it's going to continue to be an issue for a long time until we get uh, a critical mass of talent, critical mass of skill sets where we understand how to carry these things out effectively. 
And the last one, also an obvious one, the high cost of cloud computing. Not understood as much 15 years ago. In fact, I think people pushed back on me specifically when I used to talk about how cloud computing was not as cost effective as it should be. Uh, there's a cost disadvantage into moving into public cloud providers. It's well known that unless you do some very specific, well-defined things, that the public cloud providers are going to be more expensive than the on-premises systems that are there. And that's for a few reasons. Um, number one, the cost of hardware, uh, storage systems, compute systems, things like that, that would run within a data center has dropped significantly in the last 10 years. And the cost of cloud providers or the cloud services has stayed about the same, if not risen slightly. So therefore, the economic advantage uh, of using a public cloud provider has kind of been diminished. So the business case for leveraging a public cloud provider is, um, in essence, sunk a bit uh, in terms of uh, the clear advantage in terms of economic benefits that come back to the business. Now, there are always the soft benefits in terms of agility and your ability to provision things on demand, your ability to change things quickly. And that's a reason to leverage cloud computing. And certainly as people are moving into generative AI systems, you, you get a pre-built AI ecosystem that comes along with the cloud providers, but you're going to pay a lot of money for those services. And that's what enterprises are realizing right now. So if there's anything limiting the use of cloud that's holistic to all of this um, around the security issues and the compliance issues, it's the cost of this stuff. Uh, it's very difficult to get the value that's going to be coming back to the business if we view ourselves as over, overpaying for cloud services and not just specialized cloud services like, you know, GPUs for generative AI. I'm talking rudimentary, you know, commodity storage systems, compute systems, you know, Linux platforms, things like that. Um, not supercomputers, but uh, commodity platforms that are going to be cheaper in many instances if they're running the data center on their own. Obviously, if they're in the data center, we have to configure them, we have to install them, we have to maintain them, that's on us. There's overhead involved with that, and you have to figure that into the cost cost of everything. But the cost of public cloud providers is becoming a bit prohibitive uh, in terms of our ability to define the value that comes back to the business because we're spending too much on the public cloud providers than many enterprises would like to spend. Now, what, what's going to happen in the future? Are these uh, Is the price going to be reduced? I think there is going to be some normalization of prices. But the reality is, is that it costs the cloud providers a certain level of investment to maintain these systems, and they're going to recoup their investment from the users of the system. And also, there's enough demand in the world of public clouds where they're expanding the growth of public cloud providers, uh, certainly around the generative AI stuff, uh, even with the higher cost. So there may not be a lot of incentive for them to reduce the price. But enterprises are very suspicious about the cost of cloud computing, and they're limiting the expansion in the cloud. And they're looking at cloud computing as not always the most cost-effective solution because it's not always the most cost-effective solution. need to keep that in mind. Well, that's all I have for you for this week. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Also, don't forget to uh, check out my generative AI architecture course out on Go Cloud Careers. Also, my 72 plus courses out on LinkedIn Learning. Uh, I love hearing uh, about people's experiences in taking those courses. Also, my InfoWorld blog and also my book, uh, Insider's Guide to Cloud Computing. And don't forget to check me out on LinkedIn and check me out on Twitter. I'm looking forward to communicating with everybody. You guys have a great week. Take care.